Welcome to another round of Sports Views. Tonight I'm reviewing Toronto FC 3, FC Cincinnati 2, Toronto FC wins! And they have pretty much just damned FC Cincinnati to a third straight year with a wooden spoon and Toronto FC has gotten out of the basement. You love to see it. Goals were scored as follows in the 39th minute. Ronald Matarita, ball played in for him. Achara and Auro caught off, caught out very easily. Ball put in, bounces off Auro and Bono into the side netting to make it 1-0 Cincinnati in the 39th minute. That's the way we go into half. Toronto had a good couple of chances to make it 2-1 or have the game end up being 2-1 at half, but they just couldn't do it. Then in the 48th minute, Jacob Schaffelberg, ball played in by Jefferson Soteldo. Amazing run. Jefferson plays it in. Schaffelberg holds his run. Ball passed. Schaffelberg makes an amazing run. Nutmegs Teton to make it 1-1 in the 48th minute. Mark Delgado in the 55th minute to make it 2-1. Ball crossed in by Schaffelberg. Goes all the way across. Tapped in by Delgado. To make it 2-1. to one. Then Ifuninyachi Achara in the 65th minute. Slides in while the ball is falling for him. All he has to do is tap it in. He does. Very close to a defender. Makes his way for it. And it's 3-1. to one. It's 3-1. to one. Slides in, taps it in. Gets another goal for himself. Achara. Then in the 72nd minute, Luciano Acosta makes something out of nothing at the top of the box. Amazing shot. Gets past Bono. Nothing he could do about it. 3-2. to two. That's the way the game would end. Stats are as follows. 16 shots to 9. 46% possession to 54% possession. 6 shots on target to 4. 444 passes to 535 passes, 84% pass accuracy to 81% pass accuracy, 13 fouls to 11, 3 yellow cards to 4, 0 red cards to 0, 3 offside to 1, 4 corners to 2. Toronto FC, this game, especially in the first half, went side to side, half to half. This game was a very good game. It was a very good game. TFC comes back to get 3 points for the first time this season. Allowing the first goal, they never won, and they only drew six times. They've lost most of those games, though. But they finally come back to get three points and hold on, too. They came back and held on to get these three points. Second half was all Toronto, pretty much. Even though Acosta made something out of nothing, this first half was all Toronto. The second half was all Toronto FC. The first half... You could say it was half and half. It was both sides having good chances, and it really should have ended with Toronto being ahead. Ended with Toronto being ahead, but it didn't. But the second half was all Toronto. They were dominant. They were just better. They were stronger. They wanted this win against a team that's beat them twice already this year. But Toronto's been on good form recently since the last time they saw Cincinnati. And they finally get their win. And they still have a positive record against Cincinnati. Four and two. But that's still a pretty good positive record. You're always going to lose to somebody at some point, I think. And this year, Toronto gets a win over Cincinnati. They jump them in the standings. There's a reason I made that figure eight above you. A caption in my Instagram and Twitter posts. Because I'm counting down the games. This was the eighth last game of the season for TFC in the league. All that. And then above you, because we're trying to go above them. It worked, didn't it? It makes sense now. Pay attention. With that said, TFC does go above FC Cincinnati. Very good. Very easily. They've had some bad moments in this game. But other than that, they were the better team. I thought Toronto were the better team at most points in this game. Gonzalez and Lawrence worked well as a center back duo. Bono made a mistake or two, but you're always going to get that out of him. Auro and Lorea, great tonight. Schaffelberg, again, great. Man of the match for me, Jacob Schaffelberg. 
What a game from Jacob Schaffelberg tonight. He is still showing that he is getting better. He deserves to be part of this reloading, rebuild. One of the big faces of it. He has been amazing, Jacob Schaffelberg, this season. He was great under Armas. He's been great under Perez. He's getting his confidence back, and he's been actually better under Perez than he was under Armas. Getting goals for fun. Achara, as I said as well. I said he would be good, and he's been great. I've always been a fan of Ifuninyachi Achara. He's been great. He's been great. Osorio and Delgado do the dirty work in midfield. Also, Bradley does. Soteldo, he had a pretty good game. I don't know. I think he may start. I may start warming up to him. Even though 12-year-old me's favorite player was Joao Plata, so 12-year-old me would be shocked that... I was never that high on Soteldo until recently, now that things are going well. But when things are going well, I guess it goes right. Is that the point? Yeah. Maybe I should have never been so hard on Soteldo. Maybe I was just mad about this team and everything going wrong. But now, as Perez said, they're playing together. They're playing for each other. They're playing stronger. This team is better. This team is stronger than what we saw this whole year. What is the problem? Like, I asked in the stream, where has this been for the first three quarters of the season? You can still see this team has talent. This rebuild, reload, I'm starting to call it a reload because I don't think it'll take that long. The rebuild. You get a good manager in, whether it's Pirlo, Gattuso, Cannavaro, Bradley, or Bobby Smyrniotis, it's not going to take long. There are talent in this team. There are good players in this team. You just got to get rid of the ones who are dead weight. And when Seba comes back, that'll be awesome too. He'll make it even better. This team will be in the playoff hunt next year and higher up, not just seventh place. They'll be about fourth, fifth, fourth, third. I'm not saying they're going to win the East. But if they did, I wouldn't be shocked. But I can't be that high of expectations. I did it this year, and I looked bad. So we're not doing that again. I'll say third, fourth, or fifth in the East next year. I think they can win the Champions League with how weak the Mexican teams are. And honestly, I think they have something to prove. I think they'll do just fine early on in the Champions League. They could honestly win the Champions League. If they do the right things, let me say that. If they do the right things this offseason, Toronto can win the Champions League next year. They will be in the playoffs next year. This team still has talent, and you just saw it. They're still tough. They've been looking good for the past five games. Miami should have won. Nashville won. York won. Colorado, gutsy draw away at altitude. They come back and beat Cincinnati. This team still has talent. This team still has fight. They want to fight to look respectable because they know they are better than where they're sitting. They know they're better than where they're sitting right now. Even 13th place. They know they're better than where they're sitting. They know it. And we know it. And everybody knows it. This team, a lot of injuries has hurt this team. Like 2018. Everybody was flipping out about 2018, and it wasn't even this bad. But that was a lot of injuries. And the worst part about this season was at least 2018 was all at BMO Field. They were at home. This season, they still had to start the season away from home while their families were there at times. Unlike Hartford, they still had to start their season in Florida. And they still had to start their season as nomads. Then, they got to come home to Toronto, but their manager was sacked. This season has been a very, very turbulent season. I'm starting to realize the injuries starting in Orlando, moving back to Toronto, sacking the manager, Perez trying to put his style in, send it back to the Vanny era in a way, and put in his own spin. It's all been very, 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 very turbulent. And honestly, they're still showing they have talent. And they fought through the turbulence. And they still want to finish respectably. And I think they will. And I think they will win the Canadian Championship. This team, this is the real TFC. What you're seeing tonight, you could say, oh, Cincy, we beat Nashville. Okay? We beat the second best team in this conference. In the league. Frankly, third best team in the league, second in the conference. We beat York. 
dominantly. We got a gutsy draw against the third best team in the West, Colorado, at altitude, away. We beat Cincinnati, got out of the bottom, and we should have beat Miami. We should be on a five-game winning streak since the last time we saw Cincinnati. This team has fight. This team still has talent. They're not dead. Yes, do they need to make changes? I'm not saying paper over the cracks. The reason it's good we're missing the playoffs, most likely, even though we're still not mathematically eliminated, last I checked, and we won, so I'm guessing we're not. Cincinnati may, we're not. Still maybe not. The reason not making the playoffs is good because that means they cannot paper over the cracks. There needs to be changes. Unlike 2019 and 2020, you have to make changes. If you want to save your job, if you don't get fired, a.k.a. Ali Curtis, if you don't get fired, you know, you're going to have to save your job. You better make some changes. And we know they need changes. They need more center backs. They need a new striker at DP. Javinko is honestly a good signing when they bring him back. And no, those Qatari rumors are BS. Okay? He's pretty much chosen to come to Toronto. He doesn't want to go back to the Middle East. I don't know why they make that rumor up. He's coming home. All right? I'm more worried about LA. I'm more worried about the Galaxy than freaking Qatar. I'm more worried about Italy than Qatar. If that popped up, I'd be like, okay, all right. It may not be done and dusted, but I think it is. I think it is. But with that said, a new manager, Pirlo, Cannavaro, Gattuso, Bradley, Smyrniotis, something around those lines. New defenders, a new DP striker, get rid of Josie. Give more time to Schaffelberg. If you could keep Soteldo and Pozuelo, keep both of them. This team will be just fine. Maybe give Prezo more time in center mid instead of Bradley. Let Bradley be a player coach. And by player coach, I mean more of a coach than a player. If he wants to play, he can play. As an assistant coach, not a manager, by the way. With that said, Toronto FC still have talent. I'm honest about this. They'll be fine. Look at the way they played. This team is better than what they've been this whole three-fourths of a season. This last fourth is pretty damn good, setting off to be. So with that said, I'm happy with this team. I'm happy with this win. They played well. Man of the match, Jacob Schaffelberg. They've done well. They've done well for the past couple of games, the last five, and I'm proud of them. They're finishing off respectably. I'm happy with these guys. I really am. I really am. And I know we've got to make changes, and I know they will. Whether we make the playoffs or not, because we're somehow not mathematically eliminated, but we're pretty much eliminated. Unless we win every game and things go our way, which I don't think so. But last time I checked with the uh, table calculator, we were three points out of the playoffs. And goal differential, of course. Which, ninth place in the East isn't bad from where we've been most of the year, if we could make that run. Even 10th, frankly. Even 10th, frankly, you know? This is like 2018. They made a late run then, too. It was pretty bleak until they made a late run. And then blew it at the end. Remember? Remember. So, with that said, I'm happy with this team. Schaffelberg, man of the match. Good win for TFC. They came back and held on. They are not winning the spoon. I think they'll beat Chicago this weekend, too, at home. I think they will. That'll pretty much mean they won't win the spoon. I think Cincinnati is still on a bad stretch. If they were going to win a game, it would have been this one. With a new manager and TFC, it would have been this one. But they didn't. So I think we don't win the spoon. I think it's Cincinnati again. We just avoided that. With seven games to go, I think we've avoided that. So with that said, if you like this video, like it, share, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell all your friends. Check out my Patreon. Five, ten, or twenty dollars a month. Anything's appreciated. Help support the channel. Be awesome if you do. Also support by liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, sending super chats during the live streams, putting this in playlists, sharing this with your friends, all of that jazz. Tomorrow, I have a live watch along for Saprisa versus Santa Lucia leg two and a RSR. For FC Motagua versus Universitario leg two, we're going to finish off this week of games strong, or this midweek of games strong before I do a recap for the CONCACAF League. 
Mississippi State, Texas A&M on the weekend, and TFC Chicago on Sunday. So there you go. Saturday, Sunday. So we still have a full week, but you love to see it. I'm Ryan and I'm out. Peace. See you later.